In this world, there is real evil. In the darkest shadows and in the most ordinary places. These are the true stories of the innocent and the unimaginable. When Randy Irvin dabbles in the occult, he unleashes dark forces he cannot control. Night after night, vengeful spirits torment him as he struggles to protect his family. Desperate to free himself from evil's grip, Randy turns to a white witch, unaware that a battle with a demonic has just begun. Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. Standish, Michigan, a rural town near the shores of Lake Huron, was once the hunting grounds of Native American tribes. To this day, many of their descendants believe in the divine power of the spirit realm. With this comes a profound respect for the dead and a warning. Whoever disturbs sacred burial grounds will unleash the unholy. The year is 1974. 22-year-old Randy Irvin has lived in the area all his life. I wasn't in college. I uh, wasn't pursuing a career. I was still kind of uh, enjoying my time away from high school before I really knew what I was going to do with my life. Eventually, Randy finds a job working for the U.S. Postal Service. I had very good income at that time. I was looking for a place of my own. Randy moves into a beautiful old fixer-upper that his father, Roy, has been renovating. My dad would take these houses and uh, refurbish and rebuild and whatever they needed, you know, to bring them up to par to have them ready for a rental property. This house is over 100 years old. Think it might be human? I hope not. I mean, this could have been maybe a murder, a mysterious uh, story from the past that nobody knows about. So he was wondering if someone was buried here that shouldn't have been buried. Roy contacts a local physician who he hopes will provide some answers. So, uh, what do you think? Well, I think you might have stumbled across an, an old uh, Indian burial ground. You know, it's quite common. That it was a common thing to find uh, grave sites like this in Standish pretty much anywhere. What do you think we ought to do with them? I, th I think we ought to respect the dead. I'd rebury and be done with it. And they've got to go back where they belong. My dad didn't like the idea that this grave site was under his house. We put the bones back in the ground, and we kind of felt comfortable and confident that we did the right thing. Randy is disturbed by the discovery, yet something about it intrigues him. He becomes fascinated by Indian burial grounds and the mysteries that surround them. 
One day on my break at work, I stopped at a bookstore. I came across this book on witchcraft. It drew me to it. And my full attention went on this book. Randy learns that spirits can manifest from consecrated burial grounds. He also finds detailed instructions about how to conjure spirits. It talked a lot about people that had passed away many years ago and were still caught in limbo, haven't went to heaven. These are the ones they said that you could communicate the most with. And it told me different things that I was able to do. And the one thing that intrigued me the most was to look for buried money. Randy's relatives have always talked about a family treasure that was buried somewhere in Michigan. This book on witchcraft told me that I could conjure up some spirits that would help me find this treasure. Hey, Randy, how are you? It's been a while. Hi, Paula, yes. I Hi. kept yeah. this very yes. secret. I didn't share it with any of my friends. A little light reading? I didn't tell yeah, it's, anybody. No, it's actually a book of my aunt. She's into this kind of stuff. I wanted to experiment on my own without anybody coming in and telling me don't do it or that's silly, okay, this is look. dumb. I made a decision that I wanted to do this. It was my personal uh, venture, and I wasn't going to get disturbed in it. That night, I went home and I opened the book on witchcraft. The book told me I had to control the environment. I had to have all noise turned off. Anything that would disturb my concentration. instructs Randy to recite the names of four spirits. I read the instructions and what to do. All I had to do was call them out, ask them to come to me. Anatosa. Lavariki, Corazina, Simosani, appear before me. Anatosa, Lavariki, Corazina. Simosani, appear before me. Anatosa, Lavariki, Corazina, Simosani, appear before me. What is dark, be filled with light. Bring these spirits into sight. instructions, they were supposed to show up immediately. Uh, I expected maybe some voices, maybe writing on the wall. I waited and I waited and I sat there and after a while thought maybe I did something wrong because they weren't showing up.
the following night. I started hearing dishes clanging in the kitchen. I started to hear someone walking. I couldn't find anything to attribute the noises to. The next morning, Randy gets a call from his mother, Belva. Honey, are you okay? Belva lives in Mississippi, having moved there after she and Randy's father got divorced. I'm fine. Seriously. Yeah, I'm Look, fine. Something is wrong. I don't know what it is, but I can feel it. She felt very strong that she needed to come back. That was a clairvoyant Randy. kind of a thing. She Look, said, something has happened. Almost, I don't know what it me. is but I'm gonna find out. My mother and me were very close as far as uh, picking up how each other felt. That something bad has happened. Tammy Irvin is Randy's younger sister. Randy. She's 11 years old. Look, something is wrong. I don't know. I knew something was wrong with Randy. I didn't get the whole thing because I was just little. They don't like to talk around kids. But we listen. A month later, Belva and Tammy return to Michigan and move into Randy's house. Uh, did you have a good trip? He was pale, like sickly looking. He lost a lot of weight compared to what he did when we left. He didn't look good at all. You look tired, honey. I have a. I had a little trouble sleeping, that's all. Hey, come on, let me show you the house.
have a radio in here, Mom. It was coming from the far corner uh, of the bedroom. We both started searching to see if maybe uh, a friend of mine had left a radio. Honey, everything's fine. But I heard music. Randy just had his radio on too loud, that's all. Yeah, sorry about that, kiddo. Didn't mean to wake you up. Well, it's kind of difficult trying to understand when they won't totally explain what's going on. Go on back to bed. I'll be there in a minute. What was that, Mom? I'm not sure. Belva attributes the organ music to her late mother. She knew that her mother loved playing the organ. How could it be Grandma? She's dead. I know that, but organ music is just Grandma's... Belva believes that the music is just her mother's way of letting them know that she's looking out for them. Yeah. Grandma, right? Try to get some sleep, honey. Randy is afraid that the spirits he invoked are causing these unexplainable noises. But he can't bring himself to tell his mother that he's been experimenting with the occult. in the place where they were. I felt a lot of cold air. explain this to somebody? Who do I tell? Who's gonna believe me? Who's gonna listen? Randy doesn't want to worry or scare his family until he himself understands what's going on. If anything was to happen, I wanted it to happen to just me, and I was willing to go through whatever that was that was necessary to, to have all the torment reflect upon me and no one else. bedroom. Randy is petrified. on my leg, it never cut into my skin. 
but they were sharp. I could feel how sharp they were. I thought that I was losing my sanity. Randy, you all right? My God, you're shaking like a leaf. What is it? What's wrong, son? Something's happening to me, Ma. I go to sleep every night, and every night something wakes me up. What wakes you up? The music wakes you up? No, Ma, not the music. It, well, I'm hearing things. It's... I mean, it's the music, but it, it, it's, it's, it's footsteps, and it, it's clanging dishes. And now there's something growling at the foot of my bed. It's growling at me like it's going to rip me apart. I can't see it, but I know it's there because it's... It's breathing and clawing at me. All right. Sit down and take a deep breath. Am I going crazy? Am I going out of my mind? Randy, listen to me. I believe you. Whatever this is, we'll, we'll figure it out together. Did you hear that? It's over there, behind the TV. Belva turns to the Book of Psalms for protection. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Nor sin Somebody else was there, and we just didn't know who or, or what was causing it. I just know that it was going on, and it was scary. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. As Belva continues to recite verses from the Bible, the vicious growling slowly subsides. Randy prays that this will be the end of his affliction. Horazina, Simosani, appear before me. The torment that plagues Randy at night takes its toll during the day as he struggles to focus on his job. I was getting uh, mentally exhausted, emotionally exhausted. It was because almost every single night I was wrestling with these things. Hey, this package isn't for me. I'm 633 Maryland to 639. That's across the street. At home, Randy tries to spend some quality time with his sister. But his mind is elsewhere. Do you hear that? Do I hear what? scratching from a door to a room that my dad had some antiques stored in there. Oh! 
get Belva her Bible. This thing literally had her in, in a chokehold, and I believe trying to take the life right out of her. I think I was shocked and freaked out all at the same time. This situation really convinced me these things were evil. They were out to get us, and it wasn't just me now that was experiencing the torment. We didn't know where we are going to go, but we headed for the car because we had nothing else in our mind except to escape. Randy and his family are forced to move. They rent a small house across town. It's the only place they can find on such short notice. Randy is overwhelmed with guilt. Can't open her? He knows that he is the reason why his family is suffering. Honey, everything's gonna be okay. I'm fine. I felt a lot of remorse what I brought upon my family. I need to tell you something. Dad found uh, some bones underneath the house. They were a part of an Indian burial grave. I didn't think it worked at first because nothing happened, but I was wrong. My God, Randy, what have you done? I bought a book on witchcraft. She was very shocked that I did that. I don't know what else to say. She Mom. knew I had kicked something open. It's, it's all my fault. I did this to us. I, I'm the one responsible for all of this happening. Honey, listen to me. Everything is going to be OK. We're safe. <gasps> not gonna stop. They followed us. They don't want the house. They want me. Mom? I heard weird noises. The noises. Yeah. All of it. It came with us. It followed us. Go, go back to bed, honey. E everything's okay. You wanna know why it's still happening, but nobody's given any answers? Randy is desperate. I wasn't going to give in to these creatures. I wasn't going to crawl in a corner somewhere and die. I had made a decision that I'm going to find help one way or another. I, Although he's not a member of any church, Randy sure seeks the help of a local minister. I didn't know where else to turn. Well, God is here for you to help, my son. So tell me what's on your mind. Do you believe in witchcraft? 
witchcraft was created by Satanists to dispel the Lord's power. They prey on the weak-minded, creating an imaginary world of demons, but it's not real. It's a fabrication created by you. And us again. I don't think you understand. These things are real. They're not just in my mind. I, I, I know that. I'm awake when they attack. He said, I've never come across a situation like this before. I've never heard anyone having a problem with having spirits and, and entities like that taunting them. Have you accepted Jesus Christ into your life? Have you asked for his forgiveness? You, you're not listening to me. Okay, you're not, you're not listening. These things want to destroy my family. Don't you understand that? I don't need you to preach at me right now. What I need is your help. Have you considered talking to a therapist? I'll pray for you, my son. I went to several different churches, different faiths. I got the same answer from every church and every pastor I went to see. They didn't know how to help me. There's got to be someone out there. If these things are demons or devils, somebody has got to know something. I wanted my life back, and I was fighting for everything that was within me. I didn't know how to fight, but I wasn't giving in. to do. Determined to put an end to his family's torment, Randy decides to take a risk. He figures since witchcraft released evil into their lives, perhaps witchcraft can send it back. Belva is uneasy with the idea, but realizes that they have no other choice. If we don't do something, what, what, what next? Who's next? Tammy? All right, son. Randy contacts a white witch named Mike Bosick. A white witch believes in good, believes in God, and believes in trying to help. This is my mom. Mike practices the traditions of Wicca, a modern pagan religion based on ancient witchcraft originating in Western Europe. Don't mom me. It's late. Go to bed. Wiccans believe in a reverence for nature and the use of magical circles for ritual purposes. I thought it was an answer to a long-awaited prayer. That will protect the house and us. He knew how to close the doors if I had opened doors that I shouldn't have. He knew how to send these things back. To guard them from malevolent forces, Mike must first create a ring of protection around the house. Mike warns them that they must stay inside or the barrier will weaken and their safety will be jeopardized. This is Mike's first attempt at expelling unholy souls from a person's life. I looked at it as a way of expanding my experiences, a lot of it is a leap of faith. You, know, you have to trust in that you're doing everything right. Guardian spirits, hear my call. In the dark corners of the night. Mike must circle the house three times to complete the protective barrier. He hopes it will be strong enough. 
and then return from whence you came. As I was constructing the ring, the wind was picking up. Guardian spirit, hear my call. As all of this intensified, I knew it was something trying to stop me. And if there's something trying to stop me, I must be on the right course. When you're dealing with the occult, you can't have no sign of weakness. You have to be determined and with a resolve that shows the spirits that you're the one in control, not them. the third ring, the wind stopped. Will you join me in the circle? As part of the protection ceremony, Mike constructs a pentagram on the floor. It just symbolizes the five important deities of Wicca. Unlike a satanic pentagram, the Wiccan star is not inverted. Mike lights candles and pours salt around the pentagram, sealing the protection ring. It is imperative that we stay within the pentagram until I complete the ceremony. Unfettered spirits. Far from home. The candle started to flicker, which to me meant that something trying to come through. Come to this place, do not delay. And it was something I didn't want there, but I felt confident enough in the strength of the ring I had set up. And force all the unholy ghosts away. To complete the ceremony, Mike must blow out the candles. Belva and Randy are relieved. The nightmare is finally over. I was getting excited, because from what I understood, this gentleman knew what he was doing. Experience. His protection barrier fails against the dark forces of the occult. This thing was a lot more powerful than I realized. Randy can no longer ignore the dangers of tampering with witchcraft. He threw fuel onto the fire and made it worse. Unable to offer another solution, Mike leaves the house. I know. 
I need to think about it. Randy, Belva, and Tammy are left alone to deal with the aftermath. Stay. What's happening to us? I don't know, honey. I just don't know. Will we be okay? Yes. We are going to be okay. Everything's going to be just fine. started falling into a deep depression. I didn't know where to reach out. I didn't know who to reach out to. I knew that the edge of insanity was in front of me, and I could cross that line at any time. Hey, Randy. Hey, what's going on? You know that, uh another book on witchcraft and that's when I broke down and kind of started explaining what I've been going through you think I'm crazy no I don't Randy I know someone who can help you Paula directs Randy to Nora Rayner a healer known to help those who have been oppressed and tormented by demonic spirits when I went to her house, I kind of refrained a little bit outside of wondering how a woman could help me in this situation when I went everywhere else. Looking to get a haircut? Yeah, you don't usually get many men around here, but have a seat. Nora Rayner appears in silhouette to protect her privacy. When I first met Randy, he was in a terrible physical state. He was very thin, very nervous, very anxious, and he looked very sickly. Look, I, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't have come. I shouldn't be here. Are you okay? Nora senses that Randy is deeply tormented. You want to talk about it? I want to die. Why? I did something stupid and I put my fam family in danger. He came to me out of desperation in a state of fear. Did you uh, ask for help? God. Listening to him, I just knew he needed deliverance. Do you have the answers? And I knew I could do that. I believe I have a gift from God, an ability to heal. But in order for me to help you, you must believe in God. Can you do that? He says, I'm gonna say a prayer out loud, Randy, and I want you to repeat it for me, and I want you to mean the words that I recite to you. Don't just recite them, I want you to mean exactly what you know, you're saying. Jesus, I ask that you forgive all of my sins. Nora says a prayer of deliverance. My Savior and deliver me from what I am going through. <clears throat> I, I can't, I can't, I'm trying, I, I can't say it, say it. Take your time, focus on his love. Randy finds himself unable to recite the prayer. I felt myself going partially unconscious. Jesus!
I had prayed deliverance before, but never imagined anything like this. It was important to me to stay strong in my faith. If I would have let my guard down, I would have lost. I would have lost the battle for Randy's life. I knew that I was liberated. I wasn't dead inside anymore. Someone cared. It was him. It was Jesus that cared enough to uh, set me free. Soon after Randy's deliverance, the family returns to the house. Nora believes they must bless the place where dark forces were first unleashed. many blessings and ask that you bless this house and this family. She felt a bottomless pit had been opened and she wanted to go back there and close it. There's a power of darkness out there that's lurking to feed in to anyone who has this curiosity about the supernatural. Everything's gonna be okay. I wouldn't advise anybody to mess with witchcraft. I wouldn't advise anybody to dabble. It may not affect you as it did me, but you will open the door. You will let something in your life. It is a door that you can't close. Mm -hmm. 